But as I told you, 90% of the chest pain patients will have a very benign course. But 10% of them are one who you, are, you cannot afford to miss. Because you miss these patients, they are going to die. So that is why any general practitioner or clinician is worried about the diagnosis of chest pain. The moment patients come with a chest pain, they just push to a, a higher centers because they don't want to take a risk. But if you diagnose these 10%, so what are these 10% you should be knowing who can die? The one very important is acute myocardial infarction and acute coronary syndrome. Second, pulmonary embolus. Third, aortic dissection. Fourth, tension pneumothorax. So if you differentiate these four type of the patients who are presented to you with the chest pain, you are through. That you are, if the patients are not in these four uh, diagnoses, rest all diagnoses are not going to kill the patient you can diagnose on your leisure time, you can give a time, you can uh, take your, uh, you know, they can admit it, they can be evaluated for this, but these four conditions has to be diagnosed immediately and that is the goal of evaluation of the chest pain. So what is a, how the patients of acute coronary syndrome or myocardial infarction presents, how pulmonary embolism, aortic dissection, tension pneumothorax. We'll just see this in the next five to 10 minutes. So as I told you, whenever the patient comes to you, just ask them a history. This is also I've discussed with you that out of these six to seven condition, which is the condition patient like cardiac exertional cold or worsening of the plasm, esophageal plasm. I just spoke about this. I just uh, uh, rushed to this. Then the region and location, I spoke that if it is a cardiac angina, that patient should be a substernal pain. The timing is also important in these cases. You should also look for the associated symptoms when you diagnose all these patient uh, history-wise. Look at the associated symptoms of the patients. Then once you are through with the history of the patient, once you know that this patient either cardiac or non-cardiac, if non-cardiac, maybe a gastrointestinal, possibly a pulmonary, possibly a musculoskeletal or any other uh, evaluation, you have some framework in the mind. Then what you should do is, you should look at the general appearance of the patients. Any critically ill patient who presented with the acute myocardial infarction, who presented with general uh, uh, pneumonia, or who presented with the pulmonary embolism, you see the look. The look is very ill. Patient is toxic. Patient is grueling with the pain. Patient is breathless. You can see at his face that that is very important as a general practitioner. That general appearance of the patient matters the most because you are the one who are seeing the patient for last five years, six years, seven years. And the moment you uh, see this patient today, he is completely different. So don't get away with your gut feelings that there is something different with this patient. The general appearance of the patient as a clinician is very, very important. Check for the vital sign. Either there is a tachycardia or there is a bradycardia. Both are dangerous. Either patient is in a complete heart block or tachycardia. Both are dangerous. Then see the blood pressure, hypotension and hypertension, both are important things. Auscult at the chest if you find any basal rails, any crepitations in the chest wall. Then see the uh, CVS findings. Are you uh, seeing the S3, S4 in that sense, in any murmur in that area, any pericardial rub? All those things has to be seen in the general examination when you auscult it for uh, patients of the cardiac, any kind of a chest pain. If the vital signs, general appearance, hypotension, bradycardia, tachycardia, and the ex chest examination. This becomes a very, very important thing. So once you label, a, label the patients into these uh, different categories, then you see them uh, clinically. You have the, done, their, uh, hypoten uh, done their general uh, checkup. You know that this patient is critically ill or not critically ill. So next how should you evaluate this? Very important investigation present everywhere, that is ECG. See ECG, if you are thinking about the chest pain, most of the general practitioner are afraid of the ECGs, that what should I see in the ECG? I don't know how to read the ECG, but then only see a ST elevation or ST depression. See a ST segment, if there is a ST depression, you are dealing with unstable angina. See if you are ST elevation, you are dealing with the acute myocardial infarction. And then if nothing is there, that means you are safe. That is, that is the only thing when you are evaluating see only a ST segment. Next important is chest X-ray. That patient has got 
patient or pneumomediastinum. These things has to be seen. Then unstable angina, uh, non-STMI or STMI, we should diagnose. Once we are thorough with the uh, examination, we have seen the uh, patient, we have done a ECG, we have done a chest X-ray. We'll, first, we should rule out the acute coronary syndrome. So acute coronary syndrome either presents as an unstable angina or presents as an acute myocardial infarction. Any duration of angina more than 20 minutes is always, or new onset angina is unstable angina. If the duration exceeds more than 30 minutes, that means you are dealing with the acute myocardial infarction. I just spoke about this duration and other things. So if you can see this ECG, concentrate only on a ST. V5 and V6. This suggests the patient has inferior wall myocardial infarction because there is a ST segment elevation. See this ECG, see ST segment in V3 to V6, there is ST depression in this. So we are dealing with the unstable angina. This is a very catastrophic ECG. If you see this kind of ECG, tall ST elevation in V1 to V6, it is going to be a very, very dangerous thing. That is, you are dealing with the extensive acute entry wall myocardial infarction. So after your evaluation of a chest pain, the evaluation of ECG in, in combination with the chest pain evaluation becomes very, very important. Once you rule out these conditions, you should move ahead. 